this is Somalia. It is an old country with vast distances and little water. We are mostly nomads. We have no settled home. We live on the grassy plains. We walk hundreds of miles looking for pasture for our camels and for wells where we can get water. They are the two most important things in our lives, camels and water. This is Ishmael Ishmael. It is a Muslim name for we are all believers in Allah the Compassionate. Ishmael's father is Mohammed Ishmael. He believes strongly in his family and his nomadic traditions. And when we camp, it is the women who must put up the house. First they must get the camel to kneel. And camels can be very stubborn. The house is made of hoops and bent roots and mats of grass and animal skins. Only the women know how to put up the house. Somali men wouldn't know how even if they had to. But no Somali man would ever think of doing it. It is woman's work. The insects are harmful at this time of year. Camels often get many sores from insect bites. So Ishmael and his uncle must put medicine on it. And nobody likes medicine, I guess. Not even camels. The hoops are up for the house. It only takes a few minutes. Then the women start tying on the mats. Around our houses, we make a fence out of thorny bushes. That's to keep the wild animals away, like hyenas and cheetahs and even lions. They don't often attack people, but we must watch the goats and the young camels. The house is just about finished, just in time for the night. The mornings come early, for we wake up with the sun, and often it is cold. It is the law of Allah that we pray five times a day and we must wash ourselves each time before praying. Cleanliness is part of our religion. The camels have spent the night fenced up behind the thorn bushes. But now it is breakfast time. And Ishmael knows where his breakfast comes from. Our most important food is camel milk. Often on long trips it is the main food we have. Now come on Akbar, don't be so greedy. He is impatient. See how he stamps his foot. <laughs> The milk of the camel is rich and creamy. Ishmael has drunk it all his life. But there is a visitor. It is Sheikh Hussein. He was in Hagesha, the biggest town in the north of Somalia. It is a hundred miles away. He must have walked the whole distance. Sheikh Hussein is a special kind of teacher. He is nomadic like us. He travels around and gives our children lessons wherever he finds us. It is all part of a plan of the government and the United Nations, especially UNICEF. Sheikh Hussein has told us that UNICEF helps children all over the world in many different ways. 
Before this, our children didn't have any real schooling. How could they, being nomads? It is not necessary to have a schoolhouse, to have a school. And Sheikh Hussein simply gets all the children together and teaches them under a shady tree. Ishmael and his friends, like all nomadic children, read and write in Arabic because the Somali language has not been written. But of course, we all speak Somali. The students write with soft sticks. Their ink is made out of the charcoal of frankincense, a very special tree. Hussein looks pleased. The children have not forgotten too much. Perhaps because there is no written language, Somalis remember things that are spoken. Well, school is over for this morning. The children will return tomorrow after the sun has risen. And now Ishmael's walk begins. He must take the camels to pasture. Most Somali boys enjoy going out with the camels. They may walk for several miles, 10 or 20 even, before they find pasture. But it is still early in the morning and there'll be plenty time to study. For boys like Ishmael, the camels become real friends, almost like people. Ishmael knows each camel's personality and its habits. Today they will not have to walk too far. There should be lots of pasture after the rains. The women stay at the camp. They grind corn and prepare food. They are making butter out of goat's milk. They rock the milk back and forth in a pot made of grass and it turns into butter. Somali women make mats too, like carpets. Some we keep and some we sell the next time we are close to a town with a market. The women are always working. I think in Somalia the women work harder than the men. You can always tell when the rainy season is finished in the way the women dress. They put on their most colorful clothes. And of course then we have plenty of water to wash things in. I have heard strangers say that Somali women are very beautiful. With good pasture near the camp, Ishmael can often stay fairly close to his sisters. They look after the goats. They stay out all day until the sun goes down. The camels will eat almost anything. They can even chew up sharp cactus leaves. Ishmael has strong teeth too. He cleans them with a small stick several times a day. Sometimes, Another family will be camped nearby. This is Ishmael's friend, Abdi. They are playing a game. I don't think it even has a name. You dig a hole in the sand, then try to throw something into it. Well, Abdi wins that one. 
Now Ishmael must give him a ride on his back. And Abdi throws the shoe again. <laughs> Abdi says he is going to be a fierce warrior. But Ishmael tells him he is as fierce as the dictic, a small deer, no bigger than a rabbit, who runs at the slightest sound. They have other games too, but all the time they are watching the animals. And Ishmael studies whenever he can. For Somali children know that a few years ago there were very few schools or teachers. It is men like Sheikh Hussein who are making the difference, bringing education to our children. He wants Ishmael to go to school in Hagesha. It would be a great opportunity. Hussein is my cousin. And I can remember how he did and how many people laughed at him. But he told me about mathematics and chemistry. He could explain how things grow, how the stars moved and the clouds. A week later, Ishmael's father said he must go to Hagesha to buy another camel. And he said, Ishmael would go with him. They would walk for seven days, perhaps a hundred miles. But Ishmael was not afraid of that. For a Somali, such a walk is nothing. And so they walked and walked. The country is flat and stony, but at least there was some water, a few growing things. Ishmael had never realized that Somalia was such a big country, and he knew even then that he was only seeing a very small part of it. On the fifth day, they came across a group of women dancing. They were giving thanks to Allah for the rains. For that meant the camels would give lots of milk. And their own babies would not die of heat and sickness. A few days later, they came over the crest of a hill, and there it was. And this was the market. Ishmael had heard something about it, but he had not expected all this noise and the people. He had never seen such crowds. In Somalia, everybody bargain. But you can buy many things. Vegetables, corn, bread, 
and butchers cut their meat right in front of you. The United Nations has people in Africa who are teaching us about healthy food. Some of them are from the Food and Agriculture Organization. Others come from UNICEF. UNICEF helps children all over the world with their food, health and education. And we are just learning about machines and sprays that kill insects. At first, some people thought it was magic. And Allah forbids magic. But Hussein told me it was not magic, it was scientific. But Ishmael's father was only interested in one thing, the camel market, where the Somali buy and sell all their camels. Ishmael's father looked at many camels. Some were too small, some were too expensive. <laughs> this is a nice one. His hide was healthy, his hair thick. How much? Then two men thought of a joke. They tried to ride a camel. <laughs> Somalis never ride the camels. <laughs> Ishmael had never seen trucks like that before. And so many of them. and throwing up dust like the winds of the Jilal in the dry season. Ishmael's father had to go back to the market. He would have to decide which camel to buy. Ishmael had another idea. At the end of the street, he had seen a low square building. It must be the school that Sheikh Hussein had talked about. There was no one inside, no one around. But one door was open. He had never before been in a building like this, all clean and white. And at the teacher's desk, the most exciting thing of all, books. Sheikh Hussein had told Ishmael about them. They were so small, the writing was so tiny, but they held great knowledge. You could learn so much about science, about... There was the Arabic writing, he could read, would not understand it. Perhaps he would come here, but he would have to study hard and try. Perhaps it would be the will of Allah. 